Hello everyone, welcome to my kitchen. This is the inaugural edition of Cooking with a Librarian. My name is Jacob Rockwall, and today we're going to make a recipe out of this cookbook that uh, you can get at any of our libraries. It's called Christmas Making of the Perfect Celebration by Carolyn Bell, and we're going to make panettone bread. Now, there are many different ways you can pronounce panettone. It's panettone, panettone, but in my family it's always been panettone. Now let's get right into the recipe and give it a shot. All right, so it's time to get started. We have our panettone recipe, which I will list below. You don't have to copy it down here. But we have prepared all of our ingredients. So let me read off the recipe to you. We have two, I'm sorry, three fourths of a cup of lukewarm milk. We have a package of dry yeast, three and a half cups of flour. We have a third of a cup of sugar. We will have salt, five egg yolks plus two whole eggs. So I separated the yolks and the whites of five eggs plus two whole eggs. We have three fourths of a cup of unsalted butter, three fourths of a cup of dried raisins. We will grind the rind of one lemon when we get there. And we have a half of a cup of candied orange peel. So this is basically everything it's going to take to make our panettone loaf. And let's get started. All right, so inside of our glass bowl, I'm going to take our milk, which the recipe says lukewarm. So what I did was put it in the microwave for about 20 seconds and made it warm. We don't want it to be hot because what we're doing now is proofing the yeast. And then we add our yeast to their lukewarm milk. We don't want, like I said, we don't want it to be too warm because we could kill the yeast. What we want to do here basically is reawaken it so that our bread can uh, begin to grow. So the recipe says to uh, do this and wait 10 minutes. So we're going to wait 10 minutes. I'll be right back. And we can see we've got some activity with our yeast here. And the next step is to take one cup of our flour. So I'll just kind of estimate it here. Won't be too exact. That should be good. And we want to mix that in with our yeast and get the process going here. All right, that's what we're looking for. A nice thick kind of pancake batter to consistency. All right, now we're going to wait another 30 minutes and continue with our process. All right, 30 minutes have passed and we can see we've got some proofing happening here. So that means our yeast is working well. And we're going to move on to the next step of our recipe. And that includes basically adding most of the ingredients. So we're going to add in the flour, the remaining portion of that. Uh, we want to add in a teaspoon of salt. Well, about that amount is pretty good. Then we're going to add our sugar. And then the remaining, all of the eggs. And then basically, we're going to mix that together. We'll start with our spoon. And at some point, we're going to have to get in with our hands and start mixing this ourselves. There we go. It's coming together nicely. All right. I'm at the point where I'm going to get in with my hands. I have washed my hands before this, so don't worry. I do take all the precautions. And basically, we just want to mix it, get all the ingredients incorporated. And we're coming together really nicely now. So now we're going to let that sit for just a few minutes and come back and mix in our butter. And what we want to do is take our butter and mix it in our dough. It might be hard to believe, but we're actually going to get this in there. So what we're going to do is basically, the recipe says to smear the butter in. It's basically it's softened butter. We're just going to take a scoop at a time and 
smear it on the dough and start mixing it in. A little at a time, smear it in, fold it over. All right. So now what we're going to do is cover this with plastic and leave it for three to four hours, it says, and it should double in size. So we'll be back in three or four hours to see how it's done. We want to prepare our paper that it's going to be cooking in. You can buy these specially on Amazon, or you could even use a paper bag. And as you remember, we wanted it to double in size, and it definitely has done that. So let's take the plastic off. We're just going to sprinkle a little bit of flour, and then transfer the dough on the counter. Oh. What we're going to do is add our raisins, our, uh, and our candied orange peel. And basically what we're going to do is knead that in. So you're going to need just a little bit of flour to keep this process going here. Also need our lemon zest and what we're going to do basically is just grade the lemon zest right here onto the dough. Most graters have the fine setting. So basically we just kind of want to take off some of the zest. We don't have to get the whole thing. We want enough to infuse the dough. Alright, so basically what we want to do now is need to incorporate all of this. Alright, so I'm just going to take a little more flour, sprinkle it on top here, go underneath. What I'm going to do is basically have a nice top. Kind of like that. All right, we're almost to the point where we can start baking this, but first we need to proof it again. But what we're going to do is take our dough now, that we've kneaded it, and we're going to place it inside the prepared paper. All right, and we're going to let it proof for two hours now. And we'll return in two hours to see how it looks. All right, two hours have passed and has proofed up really nicely. Now it's ready to go into the oven. So we're going to take this over to the oven and we have preheated it to 400. And let's put it in. So we're going to bake it at 400 for 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, we're going to lower it to 350 degrees. And at that point, we'll bake it until it's finished, which should be about 30 minutes. And we'll come back and see what the finished product looks like in just a little bit. All right, the time has passed. Let's turn off the oven and see how things look in here. Now, look at that. Turned out absolutely beautiful. All right, we're gonna let it cool for a while now, and then we'll give it a taste test just a little bit later. All right, and we are finished. It's nice and cool. And I've gotta say, I'm very proud of how this came out. Looks great. Um, so basically, we, all we have to do is cut into it. You don't have to peel it. Um, you can just leave it in the container. And this is traditionally how we would cut it in my family. Cut it down the middle. And then let's just take a look at the inside. And then, so basically, kind of give it like another loaf. And then you cut slices such as this. Paper's going to be trouble here. Right, cut pieces such as this. And there we have our panettone bread. You can serve it with butter, of course, 
or I just like to eat it as it is. So it tastes absolutely delicious. Well, thank you again for joining us today. And I hope you'll check us out next time for another edition of Cooking with the Library.